Take your Bible, turn to Isaiah chapter 1. I'm going to tell it like it is. I'm not going to pull any punches. I'm going to try to keep my flesh out of it. But my flesh wants to get in it. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to apologize for uh, the actions of a cop who clearly broke protocol and did something wrong. And if the jury finds him guilty, then he's guilty. And it is certainly the right of any people in this country. We have a constitution that guarantees each one of us to be able to speak our minds, to be able to peacefully speak out against a wrong that somebody in government or law enforcement has done. I will be the first to speak out against anything that any of our elected officials or non-elected officials do that's wrong and it doesn't matter to me if it's a Republican or a Democrat. I don't care about the office. If you're a politician and you've sworn an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States, then you ought, to be, you ought to hold on and hold to the Constitution that you swore to defend and protect, and the laws apply to you just as much as they apply to anybody else. And I will be the first to call out any politician, including the President, who I will vote for again, Um, but if he's wrong, I'm going to call him out on it. I have a right. And if you look in the scripture, preachers and prophets are not rulers. We're not politicians. We don't make good elected officials. We don't make good kings because we tend to be idealists and we see everything as black and white. But in the scriptures... It is the duty of the man of God to call out even a king when the king has gone against the word of God. And it doesn't matter if it was Donald Trump, George Bush, Bill and Hillary both, Barack Obama, Donald Duck, doesn't matter. If they are a ruler in this country then they have to abide by the same rules and laws that govern the rest of the people. And it's insane to pass a tyrannical health care bill that applies to the citizens but will not be applied to the Congress. That's stupid. They ought to be held to the same standards as everybody else. Just because they're elected officials doesn't mean that they're gods over this country. And I'm sick of that kind of ideology. And again, it doesn't matter if it's Democrat or Republican, liberal or conservative. If they're wrong, they're wrong, and I'm going to call them out for it. Amen. And again, it's the right of any people, if they feel that they have been aggrieved by their government, if they feel that they have been wronged by their government, or anybody in law enforcement, it is their right to stand up and protest that. But I lose sympathy for the hypocritical way in which it's done. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have, what's that word? Rebelled. Underline that word. Rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner. Not... As I'm preaching this, and I'm reading this, I want you to think 
of you first. Judgment begins at the house of God, and the house of God is you. So, yes, I'm going to be speaking about some stupid politicians in this country. Bunch of hypocrites and traitors that ought to be arrested. And I'm going to say it. But let's not dare make the mistake of applying Scripture to somebody else before we apply it to ourselves. Let me read this again, and I want you to think of you as I read it. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. And I want you to ask yourself this question this morning. How do I respond to God's Word in my life? Am I obedient, or am I rebellious against it? You ask that question. You judge yourself. You don't have to worry about anybody judging you. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. I want you to think about that. Even dumb animals know that they have an owner. My dog, stupid as they are, they know that when I say something, and when I stomp my feet, they know that I'm the boss. They know that. And yet, he said, Israel does not know, my people does not consider a ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are, underline that word, corruptors. Corrupting the moral fabric that holds this nation together. And I am talking about the family. A husband, a wife, their children, not a bunch of sodomites, not a bunch of people shacking up in fornication. We have corrupted the moral fabric of this nation. And we question why things are going to hell the way they are. Preachers saw it coming years ago. A seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord and they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should we be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. You know what that means? It means that God used a rod against them and it didn't stop them. And they revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. That is the stench of America right now and it exists in black neighborhoods and it exists in Latino neighborhoods and it exists in redneck hillbilly neighborhoods just as equally I'm not giving anybody a pass your country is desolate your cities are burned with fire Boy, ain't this Bible right. Your land, strangers, you can write above that, China. Devour it in your presence. Let me tell you what your union officials told you to believe in. They told you to believe that if you vote Democrat, that they will be for high paying jobs. But the truth of it is, they mean to sell out every job they can to China. And they've been doing it for years. If you think the liberals in this country are for you because you're of a minority class, or you're in a union, or you're in a special group, if you think those people are for you, you are crazy. They are using you as pawns in their political power game. And as soon as they are done with you, they don't mind wadding you up and tossing you to the heat. They don't mind that your neighborhoods are scarred with violence and with drugs. They don't care about you. And if you think they do, you're wrong. Strangers devout in your presence and it's desolate as overthrown by strangers. The word revolt. Here. It's in the scriptures. Look it up. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I ask for your help this morning. Lord, I am zealous for my faith, and I am zealous for my country. The world at one time looked up to America, but now America is a stench in the nose of people all around the world because of our iniquities. Because of lackluster preachers, afraid to rock the boat, afraid to say, thus saith the Lord against the iniquities of their own people, worried about losing their job, worried about losing their retirement, worried about losing their pensions. And Father, the sins of this country to be laid at the foot of every pulpit in this nation. And it's no wonder that we see the iniquity, the evil, the rebellion, the treason that we do. Not just of the terrorist groups, but of the very elected officials who swore to defend the Constitution. And swore on a Bible to do it. It's an atrocity that we have Muslim extremists sitting in Congress. It's an abomination to this nation. And Father, I pray, dear God, that you would raise up men of God who would stand for the truth, stand for your word, not back down. These are the liberties that not only the men of Omaha Beach, the men who climbed that cliff to face down those German soldiers, the men whose blood was shed all over the Pacific Islands, the men who fought bravely in various wars and conflicts in this country, who stood for their country, their blood was spilled and the blood of Jesus Christ was spilled to give us all liberty. And we have turned that liberty into treason. I ask not anymore, God, that you bless America, but that you have mercy on her. But Father, I have only to ask that you judge America. Starting with us. Starting with the pulpits. Starting with the churches. Judge the homes. Convince people that these alternative ways of life are wrong. They're filthy. They're full of tragedy and disaster. And they lead to death. Father, I don't know what's going to stop the tyranny that we see and the rebellion, the sedition, the treason. I don't know what's going to stop all of this. So, Father, we call upon you as our God to come down and change this country. My children and my grandchildren need a place where they can learn about Jesus the way their grandpa did. My grandchildren are going to need a, a place that will preach the truth to them so they can repent of their sins and be saved. Our offspring, our children, our grandchildren, and the children of our grandchildren need to live in a place where liberty abounds because the gospel abounds. And Father, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Not the way it's going. So Father, help us to stop thinking about ourselves and what we're to gain. And help us to think about what's right for our country and for the future the gospel of Jesus Christ in this land. This is the last place. We don't expect Canada to rise up in righteousness anytime soon. They've turned over to socialism. They've turned over to tyranny. The lips of their pastors have been locked shut by their government. It's not going to happen in Canada. It's not going to happen in Mexico. It doesn't look like it's going to happen anywhere else if it doesn't happen here.
So, Father, help us, dear God, to fall in line with your word and to believe it and to heed its warnings. Help, us, help me preach this morning, I pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 15. I've got a little bit more to say about 1 Samuel 15 and what led up to that. It's really interesting. Something that I didn't know till yesterday. But this was Samuel's warning to Saul. Saul, who had already disobeyed God's word, he had rebelled against God's word. And Samuel told him, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. These are two things that God expressly forbid in his land. He said, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And he said, I'll not tolerate idolatry in this land, and I will punish anybody who does it. And so what Samuel reminded Saul is, Saul... You may think that what you did is okay, but what you did was rebellion against the Word of God, and God sees it exactly the same way as He sees witchcraft. And I'm here to tell you that we are, rest we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. We are wrestling against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. There is a spirit of rebellion deeply in this country. And if we think that God is going to stand by and allow it, we're wrong. Proverbs 17, 11, An evil man seeketh only rebellion. So write down, make a list of all of the elected officials and the bureaucrats that have sided with those who are burning down the stores and the buildings in our cities. Make a list of them because I guarantee you they are evil people. When the mayor of Washington, D.C., who goes to Congress for more handouts, more money to throw away, when she complains about the plight of her city, the plight of her city is her fault. And she has the audacity to tell the troops, the men who were brought in to protect her city, that they have to sleep out in the street like dogs. She ought to be arrested and thrown out of office. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Uh, you know what messenger is? An angel. An evil spirit will only come as a result of the wickedness that is in her heart. 2 Peter 2.10 In fact, turn to 2 Peter. Second Peter, let me give you the context of what he's talking about. This, listen, this Bible's right. You ought to read it every now and then. Can I hear you say amen? You ought to read it every now and then. You can't complain about the ills that you see going on in your country when in fact you're a part of it because you will not adhere to the word of God. You're just as guilty as they are. 2 Peter chapter 2. Let me give you the context of that. He says in verse 1, there were false prophets also among the people. Let me tell you something. There are agent provocateurs in every city in this country. Work it. We, we have, the government, the FBI, has agents embedded in Antifa. And they know what their plan is. They know where the money's coming from. They know what politicians and what movie stars are donating to those terrorist organizations. I think some people are fixing to be in big trouble, or at least I hope they are. But let me tell you, those people are false prophets. They are stirring up and they are agitating violence, tyranny, rebellion against authority in this country. And God hates it. Let me hear you say amen. So that's the context of it. If you look down in verse 10, what I have up on the screen, he's referring chiefly to them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Let me tell you, let me tell you about the people who want to defund the police. The people who want to defund the police are drug heads. And I'm, I'm talking including politicians and bankers and business owners. They are drug people. They are drunkards. They are 
child molesters and child pornographers who do not want the government coming in and finding out what they're doing because it's wrong. They're covering their own sins when they say, we want to get rid of the police. Anybody who says that, what that means is they have a closet full of iniquity that they don't want anybody to find out about. I guarantee you that's what's behind it. They walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Let me tell you, and I, I'm going to preach this on the left and I'm going to preach it on the right as well. I get emails from people saying how wrong I am for promoting government. God promotes government among men. If you don't believe that, you need to read your Bible again. And I've had people come to me, oh, you can't tell me that God is in some evil politician. If God put them there, He is. If God put them there, He means for them to be cruel authority over those people. He gave them the governor that they deserved. And I have people all the time telling me, well, I'm not for any government that's wicked. You're wrong. You're wrong. Let me, let me go back over this deal about Israel. Who is it that moved Israel and the 12 tribes down to Egypt? Who did that? Who put them there? God did. Who is it that allowed a cruel Pharaoh to place them in bondage? God did. And so then when God dispatched Moses to go back to Egypt, what were the words that Moses was supposed to say? What were those words? Did he say, we're leaving and you can't stop us? No. You need to read your Bible again. Moses said, let my people go. And not even God would remove Israel from Pharaoh's authority until Pharaoh released them. Am I right? Now, if you think I'm wrong, you show me the scriptures. God put them under cruel authority to cause them to cry out unto him, just as he did all throughout the book of Judges. Every time Israel turned back into idolatry and wickedness, God put them under deliberate cruel authority and put them into bondage so that they would cry out to God and then God would save them from it. So you keep your religious anarchy away from me. I don't want to hear it. Presumptuous are they. You know what that means? They commit presumptuous sins. You know who that is? That's Joe Biden who groped and acted out on a Secret Service agent's girlfriend at a Christmas party in the White House He's presumptuous in doing that because he believes because he's Joe Biden, he gets away with it. Remember what Nancy Pelosi said? Of course he didn't do it. He's Joe Biden. I say, he's Joe Biden. Of course he did it. And see, that's what gets me. The hypocrisy of the left liberal in this country who cry, me too, me too, believe all women, unless they accuse Joe Biden or Bill Clinton. And then, well, how dare they? they we, uh, there's, a, there's a process. We don't, we don't necessarily believe him. He's innocent until proven guilty. Really? Where were you three months ago? Where were you when Brett Kavanaugh was being accused of it? You filthy animals. Presumptuous are they self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. They say, tear down the government. Get rid of the president. Get rid of the governors. I'm going to show you something in a minute. If you don't know what Antifa is, it is a shortened version of anti-fascist action group. It comes, even their logo is the same as the German 
communist organization that was under Adolf Hitler in Germany. Communist organization. These are the ones. I listen, it I agree. It wasn't a majority of black protesters protesting the death of George Floyd. It wasn't them who burnt down all those buildings. In fact, they were going around filming these idiots saying, we didn't call you down here. We don't want you down here. They're going to blame us for that. Guys going around saying, hey, see that pile of bricks? That wasn't here two weeks ago. There ain't no construction around there. Who dropped off a pile of bricks? What are you, crazy? Dropping off a pile of bricks in front of a government building? They're going to blame us for that. I'm not against those people. They have a right to protest. But this kind of stuff here, our president was right in naming them a terrorist organization. Let me tell you what that means. That means now that all of the data that the NSA has on their cell phone records, their emails, their text messages, and their bank accounts is up for grabs now of government agents. I guarantee you, every Hollywood person, every rap singer, and every politician whose campaign funds went to fund Antifa, they're about to get caught. Let me read to you, the, uh, you may not be able to see this, let me read to you the absolute lunacy that Antifa represents. Number, eight, number one, liberation will be won by any means necessary. That means we'll burn it all down if we have to. Number two, we will destroy the state. Well, you know what that means? The government. We will destroy the state, the police, the military. You know what they just said? All of the people who protect honest, innocent citizens, they mean to destroy. Why are you friends with Antifa when they mean to destroy the very people who are protecting your home? You're an idiot. We will destroy the state, police, military corporations, and all those who run the American plantation. How dare they? How dare they claim that they live in a plantation called America? Their forefathers would scream bloody murder at them. Those people don't know what a whip is like, what a lash to the back is. What it's like to work for no pay, work under tyranny, work under slavery. They have no idea what they're talking about. How dare they call this country a plantation? Listen, the people in Kenya have real problems. Antifa, it's make-believe problems. These people need to starve to death for about a month. We will live with dignity in a world without prisons. So, all the idiots who released criminals out of prison because of a virus so they could make room for people who went to church when they weren't supposed to, they're just as stupid as Antifa is. So I told you, I'm not going to pull any punches. I'm going to use words. Idiot, stupid, criminal, traitors. Systems of punishment will be abolished. There will be no law to enforce, no money to protect. Animals. The Bible calls them brute beast made to be taken and destroyed. And I guarantee you, you cannot reform them. They must be abolished. Revolutionary justice will be determined by those who are oppressed. Number six, there will be no government. No person or group will have power over another. What did that verse say? Despise government. Number seven, communities will make decisions about how they live and will make sure that everyone has what they need to live a dignified life. Where is it going to come from? 
You know what a thief is, don't you? A socialist. Because, Sterling, they mean to reach into your pocket and take what you've worked your tail. I've watched this man work. I know, how, I know what he's earned. To watch what you've worked yourself to death over all your life, they mean to reach in your pocket and take it from you because you don't deserve it. You know why? You're white. Land is not property. According to God, it is. You want to debate me on that? God gave man rights to property when God made a law that said, Thou shalt not steal. That commandment applies both to the common man and the ruler. Alongside international comrades, what does that sound like to you? We will destroy all borders for the free movement of people everywhere. Now you know where Nancy Pelosi gets it. Militant networks will defend our... They're going to be the only ones who have guns. Problem is, they're so stupid they don't know how to shoot one. Militant networks will defend our revolutionary communities. Liberation begins where America dies. So let me, ask, let me ask all you people online a question. You're going to vote for people who support this? Because your union told you they're, they're going to get you jobs? What, are you crazy? Are you nuts? I don't care if you stop sending me money. This stuff, I'm sick of it. I've had it. I'm tired of it. I am tired of the liberal left controlling the narrative in this country. I've had it, and I'm not backing down. Socialism must have its thugs. These were Mussolini's black shirts in Italy. Mussolini knew that he couldn't get the people of Italy to vote for his fascism. So he sent around guys with clubs, with iron bars, with guns, to smash in and destroy businesses to force his way in. Sound familiar? Hitler did the same thing with his brown shirts. They went and found, hey, how would you like to be the Jew in Germany? You're fixing to be. Because you're the Bible-believing Christian now. You're the Jew of Germany. And once they label us, then they will believe that, that, that we are inferior to them, that they will have the right to steal our property, to take away our livelihood, and to have us killed. You think I'm wrong? Read your Bible. It's coming. But socialism must have its thugs. And I'm going to say this again to all the blacks in this country and all the Latinos and all the minorities. I don't care who you are. If you think these liberal socialist Democrats are for you, you are crazy. They are using you as political pawns. They want you to go out and destroy the country for them so they can take over political power. They don't care anything about you. If they did, then your plight and your cities and your communities would be in a lot better shape than they are now. How long have they been electing Democrat mayors and Democrat uh, councilmen and Democrat senators and Democrat, Democrat representatives? How long have they been putting these people in office? And yet look at downtown Detroit. Go to East St. Louis. Go to North St. Louis. They're using you to destroy America the way it is so they can take it, carve up the Constitution, and rule themselves. This is who the left liberal Democrat have on their side. Communist. Communism is evil. Ronald Reagan was right. Communism is evil. And socialism is evil. God is against all of it. Somebody say amen. So this is, who, this is who you have, if, you're, if you vote for a Democrat, this is who you have on your side. Communist, socialist, 
corrupt, deep state, globalist politicians and or bureaucrats. The reason why Hillary Clinton gets a free pass in every crime that she committed is because the Department of Justice is loaded with liberal socialist Democrats. That should have been made manifest when they convicted a three-star patriot general for doing nothing wrong, but the same man, James Comey, gave Hillary a pass on her missing Secretary of State emails. She committed a federal crime by destroying every one of those. And she gets a pass. Baby killer abortionist, Planned Parenthood, that's, who you, that's who's on your side. Is that who you for? Is that what you want? You want more abortions in this country? You want more the blood of living babies who survived the abortion? Who will be murdered after that? Who cry for life and will be murdered after that? That's whose side you're on. The LG, lettuce, gravy, bacon, tomato, queso, by omnigendered, MAP, you know what that stands for? Minor attracted person. Pedophiles. Joe Biden's one. All you got to do is watch him. I'm telling you, that man is eat up with pedophilia. Wouldn't surprise me if that man's computer was loaded with child porn. But they're not going to do a thing about it. Because he's Joe Biden. NAMBLA, the North American Man Boy Love Association. Listen, that organization has been around for years, but they're coming out now. They want to be accepted along with the other queers in this country as being a special... Listen, they don't want equal rights. They want special rights. Is it not racism when a particular race of people want special privileges? Is that not also racism? You have perceived gender perverts, Islamic terrorists, earth worshippers, Gaia worshippers, illegal aliens, people who are in this country to do nothing but sap its resources illegally. Every politician who voted to give them a driver's license ought to be arrested. To me, that's treason. That's enough for me. Antifa, the anti-fascists, the rioters, the looters, the MS-13 gangs, the Hollywood rap, pop artists, mainstream media, they're all on one side. Quit getting your news from CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, and half of Fox News. Quit getting your news from them. Quit believing what they tell you because they're lying through their teeth. Why do you think Donald Trump tweets out what he tweets out? Because it bypasses the media. He hates those people. He hates those people. He doesn't have any respect for them at all because he knows at the end of the day, no matter what he says, they're going to lie about him no matter what. He was never supposed to be elected president. And they tried everything to get him out of office since then. And I'm going to say this, it would not surprise me if we woke up one day before November the 3rd and find that cities all across the country have had a nuclear bomb detonated. These people will go to any extreme necessary to get him out of office. Are you kidding me? If they kill Trump and Pence, we have Pelosi as president. She's two steps away from running this country down the drain. The battle's real. Now, this is David Dorn. Somebody tell me who he is. Retired police captain, working as a security guard 
at a gun shop who was murdered in cold blood by about four or five black men who were there to steal guns. Why aren't they protesting his death? I'll tell you why. They're hypocrites. We wake up every day to two, to three, to five murders a day in St. Louis. No one protests the killing of a three-year-old child. No one protests. No one protests when a white cop kills a white person or a black cop kills a white person. But when a white cop, and they're justified, I get it. But you're hypocritical when you won't protest his death as well. So I don't have much sympathy. I have some, but not with the hypocrisy that I see. And then, how dare this idiot, Mayor Fry, Minneapolis, Minnesota, asked Trump for millions of dollars in damage because he let them burn down his city. You pay for it. You let them burn it down, you pay for it. And see, that's the other hypocrisy. There's a video out there of a, of a shop owner. He looks like he's Arabic or something like that. Antifa's protesting in front of his shop, saying, blank the police, kill the police, do away with the police. He comes out with a McCullough chainsaw. Did you see that, right? Like that. And they're all running. They're going, call the police, call the police. <laughs> Idiots. Totally immoral and totally corrupt. No wonder God killed everybody in the days of the flood. No wonder. Don't ask me for sympathy. Psalm 107.10, can I preach? Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore He brought down their heart with labor, they fell down and there was none to help. What's going to happen is that God is going to place this country under cruel authority. Mark it down. Turn to 1 Samuel 12. 1 Samuel 12. The sooner you turn there, the sooner I'll get done, maybe. 1 Samuel 12. Here's the setup. Here's why Samuel said what he said to Saul about rebellion being like witchcraft. 1 Samuel 12, 11, The Lord sent Jeroboam and Bedan and Jephthah and Samuel and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side and you dwelled safe. And this is Samuel talking to the people of Israel. And he said, And when you saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came out against you, you said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us when the Lord your God was your king. Let me tell you something. There was a reason why this country never wanted an emperor or a king ruling over it. There's a reason why we have three different branches of government to check and balance the other. But what Antifa wants is a king. What the socialists want is a king. They want an empire. They want one person to make all the rules for everybody. And it should not be that way. So verse 13, Now therefore behold the king you whom you have chosen, and you have desired, and behold the king has set a king over you, the Lord has set a king over you, and if you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also that king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your father. He warned him against rebellion, and then lo and behold, Saul rebelled. 
This is why Samuel said rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. God will reject this nation. That's my fear. We still have a God in this country, do we not? And I'm afraid that this nation will turn her back totally against God. And then, where are we going to raise our children? Where are we going to raise our grandchildren? Where is there to run and hide to when we lose the state of Missouri? I've got to move through some of this or I'll never get done. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 2. I counted. It, it kind of took me by surprise. But I counted 23 occurrences of the word rebel or rebellion or rebelled or rebellious in the book of Ezekiel. What's the number 23 represent? Death. Death. Ezekiel chapter 2 is just as applicable to the children of Israel in Ezekiel's day as it is to America now. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. Sound familiar? How dare Nancy Pelosi stand up with a Bible in her hand? How dare Mario Cuomo reject God? No, it wasn't. What's his name? It's not Mario. Who is it? Governor of New York? Idiot Cuomo. That's him. Tell everybody in New York it wasn't God that fixed our problem, it was government. How dare he do that? <sighs> Hypocrites. Verse 4, For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall they know that there have been a prophet among them. I know and recognize that because I'm preaching today, that doesn't mean that America's going to drop to her knees and everybody's going to repent and it's all going to be fine. I'm preaching to a rebellious nation. And it could be some of you sitting here or some of you watching online. But the fact is, I'm like Ezekiel. I have to preach it whether anybody listens to it or not. And thou son of man, and see what's going to happen is, as it's preached, one day you're going to stand before God and God's going to say, you heard it, but you rejected it. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid. See, there's a spirit here. Scorpions is a spirit in the Bible. That's what comes out of the pit in Revelation 9, scorpions. What do they have on their tail? Sting of death is sin. I was going to preach this morning about death. Death of a lost person versus the death of a saint. And what I was going to preach was, I think it's probably time that we start facing the idea that we may die for our faith. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, verse 7, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. God tells you, don't be rebellious. Now, Hosea 13, turn there. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you how real this Bible is. I'm almost done, but not quite. If you want to run down, grab the snack and come back up, that'd be fine. Hosea 13. I miss Jimmy Carmichael. He would have been up and running by now. <laughs> Hosea 13, verse 15. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come, the wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up. He shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword... Their infants shall be dashed in pieces and their women with child shall be ripped up. Tell me what happens in an abortion. 
they rip it up. Even if it's crying, they rip it up. That makes me sick. That makes me sick. Abortion is health care. You see that? That's the perversion of this nation. Turn to Romans 13. I'm going to go through this and I'm going to be done. And I mean this. I'm preaching this to the left wing and to the anarchist right wing who say, I only obey God. If you obey God, you obey earthly authorities. So long as that authority does not cause you to disobey God's commandments. I'm not for your sovereign citizenship. I'm not for your anti-taxes. I'm not for any of that. Render unto Caesar what are Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. And your problem is you don't want to pay taxes. You probably don't even tithe either. Well, I'm not giving it to some corrupt preacher. You give it to God and let God worry about what he's going to do with it. You hypocrites online who are anti-government, it's not every part of government that's corrupt. There are still some good guys and women in leadership in this country that want this country right. And as long as they're there, I will support them. Romans 13, 1, Let every soul be subject unto higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that are ordained are of God. I read that wrong, but you get it. Now I'm turning into Joe Biden. Oh, you know the thing. <laughs> All men and women are Christians. Yeah, you know the thing. You know what I'm saying? Is this supper time? Why is he even running? He's out of his mind. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves what? Damnation. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And if you are rebelling even against God's word or even against man's authority, you are in rebellion. Cheating on your taxes is rebellion. Hey, there's enough loopholes. You can get around most of the stuff. Do it right. But that's rebellion. Thinking that because some governor is evil, that he has no power over you, you're wrong-headed. You are wrong-headed. And God will hold you in judgment over that. God is called contempt. For rulers, verse 3, are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. He is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. I have a niece who is a deputy sheriff in this county, and I'm as proud of her as I am anybody in this world. And my sister had to, had to knock off about half of her Facebook friends because their lunacy saying, condemn the police, blank the police. And she said, I cut them off. They are not my friends. So who are you going to call when they get rid of the police? I hope they do it in at least two of these cities. I hope they do. I hope they cut out all the police departments. And then let them see what happens at midnight. When the cries of mothers and children ring out in the night air. Because no one will be there to defend them. No one will be there to execute the laws against the evildoers. You see, I don't think these people are stupid. I don't think they're crazy. I think they're crazy like a fox. I absolutely believe that the left Democrats in this country actually want this country nearly destroyed and brought down. Because most of them are in, 
are in with China, they will be rewarded financially so that China will step in and take over what's left of this country. You don't think it's going to happen? It was the plan until Trump got in office. I guarantee you it was. Wherefore you must needs be subject not only for wrath but also for conscience sake. For this, for, for this cause pay you tribute also, they are, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. That means, you know what tribute is? Taxes. Pay you taxes. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. And out of this church, let it not be said, destroy the police. If I see an officer in uniform, I tell them, thank you for your service to your country. Now, I don't approach them. I don't try to shake their hand. They don't know me. They don't know what I've got in mind. But from a distance, I say, thank you for your service. And I talked to a guy as he was a deputy sheriff. And I said, I am Holly Cook's favorite uncle. And he said, really? I said, well, I'm her only uncle, but I'm her favorite. And he said, oh, so you're Melissa's. I said, yeah. He said, well, she likes me because I bring in donuts. <laughs> Tell her I said that. Those of you who believe in God and country and the Constitution and the flag and law enforcement, would you stand? I said in January that this was going to be an interesting year. Boy, I, I was off by a lot. And I want you to hold on for a second. They're not done. They're not done. I don't think there is an end to the extreme measures that they will take to make sure that the right in this country loses this election. And remember, Nancy Pelosi is two steps away from being president of the United States. I will never serve her. Now, I'm the biggest coward there is. But I can get stirred up pretty easily when you start threatening my country, our way of life, and our ability to preach the gospel. And you have to ask the question. Our forefathers were willing. Will we be willing? Will we be willing to stand for what's right? Our Father in heaven, most of us were not born with courage. We we're born with fear, born in weakness, but we were born in America. Or we came to America. And they came to America because they wanted to come to America. They wanted a better life. And Father, we cannot let evil people in this country sell us out to become a third world nation. We can't let that happen. I want to live. I want to live to be an old man. I want to live to see my grandchildren grow up. But I don't want to live under tyranny. Help us, Father. Give us courage. Give us strength. 
to stand fast in our liberty that Christ has made us free in. Give us courage and resolve that we will either live free or die. Give us courage. Father, I love my country. I love its laws. And the laws in this country are made because you did create all men equal. And Father, that's all that the good people in this country want is an equal chance to succeed, to excel, to do for ourselves and our families. That's all that good people ask. And Father, there are still people in this country that can be reached with the gospel, and I want to do that. So Father, give us liberty. And give us leaders that will stand against the stench of evil in this country. Bless our president, our vice president, our congressmen, Lord, that are standing up for what's right. Help them, dear God, to have the courage to eliminate the evil people in this country. Our Constitution, our Bible, our way of life is being attacked. Let it not be said that we stood by and did nothing. Lead us, guide us, give us strength, give us courage. Forgive us where we have failed our country, our flag, our Constitution, and our Bible. Forgive us, Father. And help us to stand for what's right. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. I mean, God bless you. You're dismissed.